Uh, Brett, how are you, sir? Happy uh, Day of the Scouts, man. There's a bit of a long wait today. How challenging is that going to be for you as you itch and you watch some of these other players come off the board leading into your pick here in the fifth round? Yeah, what's up, everyone? What's up? <laughs> great, man. Good to see you, man. Doing? doing good. Um, can you repeat that, please? Yeah, it, it's a long wait today uh, to wait for your next pick unless maybe something happens, you move up. How, how tough is that for you watching maybe some of your guys fly off the board before the Cowboys' next pick? Um, yeah, it's cool. It's chill. Like, you never know what happens in the draft, so we're just – Wait and see. We're all tuned in, you know. And it's not really my guys, you feel me? It's just uh, players that I scouted. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have, like, that emotional attachment or anything. Like, man, I, I really – this is a dude that I really kind of felt like, ooh, we need to get him. There's definitely some dudes who I'm like, oh, he would be a really good fit for our team. But, yeah. Um, yeah, there's it's, – it's, I try not to get too attached, if that makes sense. You're good um, at but, that yeah, but, separation. But it's like if Unlike you somebody us, too, we person. get too attached here. Uh, the, 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 this like, man got attached to Peyton Wilson. He was very sad yesterday. Hey, he got attached to BB, and it worked out great for him. So. And, and it's not even too attached. It's just like if you meet somebody for the first time, like sure. you don't want to just like tell them everything about your life, right? Like, right. Um, you want to build a relationship. So like for us, it's just like um, – you know, we met a few times, and uh, we're here to do our job. Well, like, I was about to yeah. open book this thing with you, Brad. I mean, I was just about to unfold everything about me. <laughs> <laughs> about to be uh, besties, when, I felt like. When uh, you had Marist, uh, that was one of your guys, right? That was one of the, the guys that you had worked on? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Marist, I feel like out of the four players y'all took yesterday, that was the one maybe we had talked about the least leading up to the process. So oh. people listen to the show probably don't have as much of an awareness of him. Can you just give, like, a quick recap of what you like about him as a football player? Yeah, um... First of all, like the person is awesome. Um, one of my favorite like people to talk to throughout the process, through the senior bowl, thirty visits, stuff like that. Um, and then the way he plays, um, dude plays the right way. He goes hundred ten percent every single time. Um, he's a violent player and um, he loves the game. It feels like Polynesian players as well also have that high character. Avilyami Fajogo had very similar traits last mm -hmm. year. That's a big part of the scouting process for you guys as well, I would assume. Dude, and that's that's part of their culture. Yeah. Um, I was talking to him, and he was just telling me, like, um, the thing about their culture is, like, when they're playing football and they're, like, really little or whatever, um, it's not about, like, who's the fastest or who's got the best hands or stuff. It's, like, who hits the hardest. Hmm. And that's how you earn the respect from their teammates. And you can definitely see it by, like, the way he plays. It's awesome. Yeah. Football, you know, we hear a lot about, you know, football IQ and instincts and different things like that. And obviously, I mean, that, that's a big thing when you're talking about at linebacker. How much do you think those two tend to go hand in hand? And maybe specifically with Maris, the idea of your natural instincts versus your, your football brain. Like, are, do those have to generally be married to each other? Or do you sometimes see one without the other? Or, or how do you look at marrying those two ideas of somebody with a high football IQ, somebody with really good instincts? Uh, I think they I think they kind of play hand in hand. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and it starts with like playing a bunch of football. I know Maris is playing forever, so like he's able to recognize things pretty quickly. And when he does, like he makes plays on it. Is football IQ more instinctual or being in the books? Well, that's interesting. It's like how do you define instincts? Right. Right. Like it. Like <laughs> see it. See it. Sense it. Go. Which I think you see a lot of with Maris. Like I, I think you see on tape that Maris. Sees it like and kind of has the play. Yeah, like me too. No, I, I love it. That, that's the, the investigate and educate. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to ask like philosophy questions while we're here. No, but just in general, the idea of like instinctually like having a sense of where things are, are flowing and playing. Like, is that something where where when you talk about the IQ that that is a natural instinctual thing or something where you study and you put in the work to become that a high IQ player? I hear you. Yeah, I think part of it's. Um, Obviously, like the reading your keys and like doing what your coach tells you in terms of like what to see and stuff like that. Then the other part is like innate, right? I feel like there's some things that you just can't teach, and he has some of that for sure. Talking with Brett Maxey here on 105 through the fan and DallasCowboys.com. Speaking of Marist, I mean, one of the things I think stands out about him is like true three down player. Guy can cover, right? So when you look at the linebacker position, how have you seen that kind of evolve along with the NFL offenses being way more spread open now in a very pass dominant league? Yeah, yeah, he's awesome for that. Um, and, and I'd even say he can play on all four downs, just saying he can um, – bless you if that was his thing. <laughs> I, I can just say he can play on four downs, just playing on special teams. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he can cover. Uh, he's a really good pressure player. He can do a lot of things. Uh, Stucky mentioned that speed rushers are becoming a, a more of a trend in the draft now. Um, with that, 
I do think that you do see a little bit of a, a downtick of guys that can also play the run at a, at a pretty high clip but have some pass rush ability. Does that go into picking a guy like a Marshawn Nealon who isn't super toolsy when it comes to uh, the pass rush ability just yet, but he can develop that, but he's fairly stout against the run already as a DN? Yeah, um, with Marshawn personally, I know for me um, – he has a ton of tools yeah, th that you're alluding to. And so um, the first thing that stands out to me is like the way he plays, right? He plays super hard. So when you have that, um, I think as a rusher, it gives you an advantage because now you're putting pressure on the offensive line, right? And so, um, yeah, he has a lot of tools to work with. How much crossover yeah. do you guys kind of do during the season or even maybe late in the in the draft process is like, OK, uh, this this guy on the West Coast, he, he's very comparable to this guy I have in, in my region. Um, maybe he's a little bit better. Or do, do you guys compare notes or do you just stay in, locked in on your region? And when you're asked about that guy, you understand what you need to do there? Yeah, I try not to, like, talk too much about guys that I haven't watched, but mm -hmm. like um, like our over the top guys like Ross, maybe, for example, like I know he he grades a lot of the defensive players he might compare. Um, some of their attributes to some of the players that he's watched. Can you talk about what it's like to present a player to the group? You know, and you're sitting there, yeah. and, and you're the first. You're the first one, and it's and it's not an easy job. But you want to put the best his your best foot forward and your evaluation of him. What is that like with that, and making sure that everybody sees the first initial picture of that player? Yeah, it's um it's fun, and it's and it's a really um we're really fortunate to have that opportunity because I know at a lot of places um. You just turn in your reports, yeah. and then it's kind of like done for the rest of the time, right? Yeah. Count me out on that group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. so all we're doing, we're just presenting information, right? And so it just goes throughout the entire process of whenever we start after the season ends, the uh, draft ends, and then all the way up until now. And like to circle back on the other part about like um, speaking with the players and yeah. like um, the attachment part of it, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, I don't want to say like I'm like I'm not attached to anything like that, yeah. but it's it's um, we're dealing with like people like these are humans at the end yeah. of the day. Sure. <laughs> yeah. sure. So so I like I like I try to like stay away from stuff like that. So we're developing a relationship, and that really helps when I'm presenting players. Right. Right. It's hard for me to talk about. First of all, it's hard for me to talk about somebody that's not in the same room as me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's kind of just like how I was raised, whatever. So like it's really important that we do talk to these players. Um, so then when I'm talking about them, I actually know the person. Right. 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 Brett, thank you so much for giving us some time, man. This is going to be a fun day. We look forward to seeing uh, who the rest of the Dallas Cowboys are out of this NFL draft. Yeah, man. I appreciate y'all. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. You, thank you. Brett Maxey, one of your Dallas Cowboys college scouts, absolute beast, joining us here on 105.3 The Fan. You're listening to the 2024 NFL Draft on 105.3 The Fan and DallasCowboys.com.